In this game, you get to build your own three-dimensional planet with magnetic tiles, then collect animals for it. Each animal has different requirements for the kind of planet design that it prefers. If you make your planet the best for a particular animal, you'll get that card, which is the main way you earn points to win the game. I'll cover all the details of the setup and scoring later, but first, let's look at how you build your planet each round, and how the animal cards work. Each round has two phases. First, each player will add one new tile to their planet. Then there will be a number of animal cards given out as rewards based on how you've organized your planets. The 50 available tiles are set up in 10 face-down stacks of 5. Each round, you'll reveal the next 5, then each player gets a turn to pick 1. The youngest player goes first in round 1, and then you'll pass this first player token around the table to change who picks first each round. You can add your new tile to any side of your planet turned in any direction. It doesn't have to touch your existing tiles, and you don't have to match up the sides. The strategy for how you want to organize your planet is based on the animal cards, so we'll see that in a minute. Once everyone has picked and placed a tile, the leftovers get flipped back over and formed into new stacks of five at the end of the line. Since there's 10 stacks to start with, that means rounds 11 and 12 will use leftover tiles. There's only 12 rounds, so once you've made two extra stacks, you can start putting the leftovers back in the box each round instead. That'll happen earlier or later, depending on how many players there are. Now, making a pretty planet is nice, but the main goal of this game is to collect animals. Each animal has a different kind of habitat they prefer, and there are three different ways that can be counted. For demonstration, I'll use this planet, with just five tiles placed, and all of them on the same side so they're visible together. But remember, in a real game, your planet could have tiles scattered all over. And to show how different animals can work as simply as possible, Let's look at three different examples that each prefer the desert in different ways. The cobra, elephant, and coyote. These same rules will apply with other animals that prefer forests, oceans, mountains, and glaciers. And by the way, you don't need to know the names of the different habitats to play, so from here on out, I'll just refer to them by their colors. For the cobra, this five pentagon pattern means this animal wants as many separate yellow regions as possible. Yellow triangles that are connected on the same tile or around edges of the planet count as a single region. So if this cobra was up for grabs, each player would look around their planet and count how many separate yellow regions they have. You have two separate yellows here, since touching at a corner doesn't count as a connection. Whoever has the most gets this card, and remember each animal you collect is worth points at the end of the game. The elephant card shows two different habitats. This pattern means you want to have the largest single yellow region, but it only counts if that region is touching a brown on at least one side. So in your case, this larger yellow region doesn't border any browns, so it doesn't count. But this smaller yellow does, because it connects to a brown here. So your largest valid yellow is two triangles, and it's likely that someone else would win this card. The coyote has a similar pattern to the elephant, so it also looks for the largest yellow region, but this crossed out second habitat means each yellow can only count if it doesn't border a blue. Take a moment to check which of these yellows would count. Okay, hopefully you notice that this yellow is touching the blue, but your larger one isn't, so this region counts and it has six triangles. If that's more than anyone else, you'd get this animal. So that's how all the different types of animals work, with different combinations of the five habitat colors. And a lot of the strategy comes from the fact that all the available animals are set face up from the beginning. So you can see which ones are coming up and plan ahead which ones you hope to win each round. So let's look at that setup next. After you shuffle and set up the 10 stacks of tiles, you'll also shuffle the deck of animals and then lay out 20 cards face up in this pattern. Each column here is for a single round. So in the first two rounds, there's tiles, but no animals. Then you have three rounds with one animal each, four rounds with two animals, and three rounds with three animals. Remember, you're going to end up making new stacks of tiles for rounds 11 and 12 here. And that setup is exactly the same no matter how many players there are. The only other thing to set up is the first player token, which should start with the youngest player, 
And these secret objective cards, which we haven't discussed yet, give one secret objective to each player to look at. Your secret objective adjusts how you'll score at the end of the game. First of all, this gives you points if you collect a lot of the habitat type. Count the number of triangles that you have in your target habitat. So for example, this planet has 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12, 15, 18, 19 green triangles, which is more than 18, so it's worth 4 points. Then each animal you collect is worth 1 point, and you get a second point for each animal that doesn't match your secret habitat goal. So you get 1 point each for these, and 2 points for these ones. That's 15 points from animals, plus these four, for a total of 19. We just need to talk about a few more details, then you're ready to play. So what happens if two players tie when you're checking who gets an animal card? Like, if we're competing for the penguin, and we both have white regions that touch blue and include three triangles. Well, in a tie like that, just move the animal over and add it to the next round. So you'll get to add one more tile, then check the penguin again to see if someone can win it now. If it's the last round and you have a tie, then there are tiebreakers depending on what type of scoring the animal uses. For animals that want the most separate regions like this, there's no good way to break that tie, so just set it aside. But for the other two types of animals, if players are tied for the largest valid region, just check who has a second region that also meets the requirements and how big that one is. Then if there's still a tie, you can look for a third region, and so on. If you run out without breaking the tie, then nobody gets that animal. Once you've scored the whole game, if there's a tie for the winner, then whoever collected more animal cards will win. Play hard and have fun. Thanks to the Verona Public Library for sharing this game, and check out your own public library to see if they have a board game collection. A lot do. Request any other games you'd like to learn in the comments, and I'll see you next game night.